Hi, I'm Elf and welcome to Elf Needleworks. I have long had trouble finding a good sock yarn to work with. And before you go to the comments to list all of your favorite sock yarns, there's one very important thing that you need to know about me. I'm allergic to sheep's wool. As a long-term crafter, I am very aware of how fantastic wool is. It is a phenomenal insulator, it is an odor repellent, and it helps keep you dry when it's wet outside. It's perfect for knitting, weaving, crocheting, sewing, rug making, pretty much every craft that you can think of. Or at least that's what I've been told. I haven't had the chance to try it out myself. I feel like I've found some good wool replacements for a lot of the things that I make. Most of the time I find myself using synthetic yarn and primarily I use acrylic yarn. Pretty much all of my blankets are acrylic. Most of the things that I've made are made using acrylic. I feel that I've been able to find substitutions for wool yarn in pretty much all of these crafts. Sweaters, blankets, sewing. Most of the time when I do yarn crafts I find myself going right to acrylic yarn. The only place where this doesn't seem to work so well is socks. Hand knit socks really benefit from all of the aspects that wool has to offer. Your ideal sock yarn is probably going to be about 60 to 70 percent sheep's wool, with the rest being a nylon or some other stretchy synthetic fiber. You'll also find some good sock yarns that are made out of 100 percent sheep's wool. I can't use any of these, so I've had to resort to alternatives. I've made a, a few different socks and a few different patterns using different materials. My first four pairs of socks that I've made were made using acrylic yarn. Absolutely none of these socks survived for very long. Pretty much all of them developed holes. They're also not very stretchy. They don't stay up very well. They get stretched out. They wash fantastic. You can put them in the washing machine. You can put them in the dryer but they wear out. I think the argument could be made that maybe my socks weren't very well reinforced and that's why they got holes in them. But that's not my only problem with acrylic yarn. The other problem that I have is that it doesn't snap back. It stretches out but it will not stretch back. And the reason why this is important is if you have longer socks you want them to stretch and snap back so they can stay up on your foot. And acrylic yarn just does not do that. I've also made socks using 100% cotton yarn, and although that feels really nice, and it is also machine washable and machine dryable, it just still doesn't have that stretch. I did find that they have lasted. None of those socks have holes in them yet, but they're just they don't stay up and I want my socks to stay up. I have asked in yarn groups before, hey what do you guys suggest for sock yarn? I can't use sheep's wool and have received a lot of different suggestions, a lot of them being 100% acrylic yarn or 100% cotton yarn and most confusingly wool blends. <laughs> Thanks. And that actually brings me to the yarn that I thought I would be making my last pair of socks out of. One of the most promising recommendations that I received was Cascade Yarns Cotton Socks. Cotton Socks is a blend of two fibers, 89% cotton and 11% nylon. This blend means that this yarn can go in the washing machine and in the dryer, which is a big plus for me personally. And theoretically I hoped that that nylon in there would add a bit of stretch and snap back to the yarn when making socks. Now, when I bought this yarn, I actually bought it for a different project initially. I bought this yarn so that I could make a perfect scare Halloween scarf by Lisa Hannon Fox. I will say that the yarn is absolutely perfect for this pattern. It has beautiful stitch definition, it's lightweight but warm, and look at that drape. I 
absolutely loved it in this project and I was super hopeful about it working well in socks. However, <laughs> it doesn't stretch or snap back quite as much as I'd like. Don't get me wrong, there's a little bit of snap back, but it is not enough to hold up socks. My plan was, once I finished this scarf, I would start making another pair of socks. However, one of my friends gifted me some sock yarn. This yarn was the Premier, is it Premier or Premier? Premier sounds fancier, so it's probably Premier. Anyway, uh, one of my friends gifted me the Premier Fruits sock yarn, which is a 93% acrylic and 7% PBT yarn. Now, I was drawn to this yarn before my friend gifted it to me just because of the colors. It is so, so pretty. It is a self-striping sock yarn that is themed around a bunch of different fruits. And I am a sucker for fruit-themed yarn. I was also intrigued because of the PBT in the yarn. Now, from what I understand, PBT is very similar to nylon. However, once I had the yarn in hand, I could tell right away that it was considerably stretchier and snapped back a lot more than any other yarn I have ever held in my hands or pulled on. Anyway, my friend gifted me one ball of fruits yarn in the colorway Dragon Fruit. When I went to their site, it told me that it would take two balls of yarn to make a pair of socks, and although I probably could have used the one ball of yarn and made it a pair of shorties, I really would prefer to have higher up socks, which now that I'm thinking about it, if I had done short socks out of 100% cotton or 100% acrylic yarn, maybe that would have been fine. Those don't need quite as much stretch in the ribbing at the top to stay up because, well, they don't really need to stay that high up. Anyway, since I had one ball of yarn, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to get a pair of socks completely 100% made out of the yarn. Instead, I was going to have to supplement with something else. So I pulled out that cotton socks from my stash in... Woo! I pulled out the black cotton socks yarn from my stash and decided to use that to make a contrast toe, heel, and cuff at the top of the socks. And whatever. You'll, you'll see why I'm, I, I sound like that about that decision later. I then went through some sock patterns on Ravelry and tried to pick something out that would work well with self-striping yarn. Once I'd figured out kind of a general idea of what I was doing, dragon fruit socks with contrast heel, toe, and cuff, I looked around for a pattern that worked well with the yarns that I had picked out. I was looking for something that was simple but would work well with a self-striping yarn, so I settled on the Slip the Rainbow Socks pattern by Gemma Beige. This pattern is so cute. It is super simple, super easy to memorize and work with, and is so cute with self-striping yarns. This pattern is also free, which means you have no excuse not to go check it out the second this video ends. The sock pattern itself is designed for uh, manual color changes, but it does include a note on how to modify it to work with self-striping yarn. So, that's what I did. <laughs> These are my Slip the Dragon Fruit socks. They're super cute, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> really, honestly, it's mostly the pattern doing the work. Isn't that just adorable? You'll also see my contrast toe, heel, and cuff made with that cotton socks yarn. Now, <sighs> the really, I'm gonna start with the good things, the positive things, the good news. This yarn is amazing. It has incredible snapback. I'm not sure how well it shows up here, so I might do some close-ups in a moment. But look at that stretch. It stretches, and it's because the yarn itself is stretchy. It also snaps back so well. Look at this. I truly, this yarn is amazing. It's also very warm. Um, 
I would say the only downside is it's not super moisture wicking. Uh, as I've said, I'm allergic to sheep's wool, so I can't make a direct comparison to sheep's wool. But I have worked with Angora, Alpaca, Possum, and Goat before, and I would say that although this is more breathable than 100% acrylics that I've used in the past, it is not quite as breathable and moisture wicking as those natural fibers. However, since these are pretty thick warm socks that are primarily going to be worn in the winter, I don't really see sweat being a huge problem for me personally. The downsides that I saw in the cotton socks yarn, which because it doesn't cover a lot of surface area on these socks, I don't think I can make a good review on its breathability. But I will say that when it gets stretched out, as we'll see here, it stays stretched out. And I don't like that. Uh, man, it's, it's probably the most frustrating part of these socks. When I pull them on, they look great and they actually don't slip down as much as I'd like, except that this rim tends to look loose, which is just... <sighs> the Fruits yarn is really doing the bulk of the work when holding up these socks, and very little of that effort is coming from the cotton socks yarn, which it is really unfortunate too, because I think I just had way too high of hopes for this yarn in regards to socks, because of how much I absolutely love it in that scarf that I'm working on. That stretched out upper edge does tighten itself back up after being machine washed and dried, but really, <laughs> I'd like if it tightened itself back up the second they came off. Alright, I think that about concludes my review of these socks in particular. I love this Premier Fruits yarn. I am definitely going to be buying every colorway of this yarn and trying it out. I would also like to have a look around for more socks that use PBT. I ha I've had a brief look myself already and haven't really found any, but I want to know if it's really that PBT that makes it so stretchy or if Premier... Okay, that's certainly not how you're supposed to say that. Or if Premier Yarns has some special secret in there that makes this so perfect for socks. Anyway, I think that'll be it for today. Just one long video about one pair of socks. So are you going to try out this sock yarn? Are you going to go make this sock pattern right now? Are you also allergic to wool? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider throwing me a like or maybe even subscribing. If you're interested in seeing more of my work, all of my social media links will be listed down below. Uh, happy crafting! Isn't he neat? Isn't it just neat to have a little beast in your home?